Hello friends, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship among this people who are First Church of Christ in Mansfield Congregational United Church of Christ, where we boldly proclaim that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are indeed welcome here. Though we are separated in body this day, we are gathered together in heart and in spirit as we join in worship of our living, loving God. I, of course, have a number of announcements for us about the life of our church. I'm going to hold off for just a minute or two as we wait for people to gather together. So as we wait, let us sit in silence welcoming that presence of God into our midst. And friends, as we gather together, I invite you to name in the comments who is present today so we know who is here worshiping together. Welcome Jim and Alex. We're just taking a couple of minutes to wait for folks to gather. So we're inviting a moment of silence and reflection. morning. Friends, I'd like to begin today with a number of celebrations. First, I'd like to celebrate that we have raised over $846 for the water project. We are excited about the ways those dollars will be used to bring clean drinking water to people in sub-Sahara Africa and about all the young girls who will be in school each morning instead of hauling water to their families and to their communities, because that water will be right there in their community. And so I am grateful for everyone who reached out and offered some financial support to that project. And we also offer a deep gratitude to Deb Richards, who spearheaded our effort at First Church. Easter flowers are still being received. Please send your forms in to Sandy Baxter. We'll be sure to include those notices in the Easter morning bulletin. Should we not be able to gather by the time that Easter comes around, we will have those flowers available at the church for you to pick up and enjoy at home or to deliver to homebound members who would appreciate some beauty in their lives. A reminder that ministry is continuing at First Church, and so fulfilling your pledges continues to be important to us so that we can go about that ministry in our community and beyond. We will be gathering throughout the week by online community. On Thursday at 1215, we will gather here again on Facebook Live for Contemplative Communion. I invite you to bring a piece of bread, some juice, 
and an open heart as we come together to listen for God's word together and to celebrate the sacrament that binds us together even though we may not be present in body. So again, here on Facebook Live at 1215 on Thursday. First hour is taking place 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings via Zoom. Please download the app or log in to a Zoom and we can be together to share the article and the scriptures as we reflect on the news. I'm also asking folks if they would be willing to participate in something called First Church Care Correspondence. I'll be sending out an email following worship today. When you have an opportunity to send me an email back if you would like to take part in becoming a pen pal to a member of our congregation while we are dispersed. On Wednesday morning, I'll draw names from a hat and pair people up so that we can send one another texts, emails, or letters and notes, staying connected across the miles as we are separated for the time being. More information will be in that email. Sarah is also exploring ways we continue to make music together while we are not able to be in the same physical space. So look ahead to more information for Sarah. Included in that email I will be sending out later is a recording of the anthem the choir had been preparing for today, as well as a recording of the Irish dance that Sarah's daughter was going to share with us during our St. Patrick's Day brunch. So please look for those resources. I'm going to invite us to transition into a time of joys and concerns. First, prayers for all those who are affected by coronavirus, for those who are sick and for those who love them, for nurses and for doctors, for grocery workers and civil service employees, prayers for those for whom home is not a safe place during confinement, prayers for those who do not have homes to be confined to, Prayers for our elders, for all those who feel isolated in this time. Prayers of celebration for Deb Richards and Mark Messier as they celebrated their 40th wedding anniversary yesterday. Prayers of comfort and consolation for the family of Donna Clausen's nephew, Nick, who died unexpectedly this past week. Prayers of gratitude for beauty in our world for crocuses sprouting, for people helping, for coffee brewing in this post-water challenge world. Friends, if you have additional prayers that you would like to share, I invite you to type them into the comments section now, and we will share them again in the middle of the service. Let us join together in our opening prayer. Faithful God, you blessed us with your servant Jesus so that we might know how to serve your people with justice and with mercy. As we enter into this time of worship, we bring the needs of ourselves and of others. We offer them to you in faith and in love, seeking to be strengthened that we might meet them. It is in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Friends, I'd like us to join together in a simple song. We're going to be singing this song throughout our time together this morning. And because our scripture is so long today, we are going to break it up by singing this song several times as well. So I'm going to sing it through twice. And if you are comfortable where you are in joining with me in singing, that would be wonderful as we join our hearts and voices as one. So it goes like this. Water, river, Spirit, grace, sweep over me, sweep over me, recall the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. Water, river, spirit, grace, sweep over me, sweep over me, Re- 
carve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city named Sychar, near a plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to Jesus, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and his sons and his flocks who drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Let us sing. Water, river, spirit, grace, wash over me, wash over me, recarve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me. In sculpting me, water, river, spirit, grace, wash over me, wash over me, recarve the depths. Your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. Jesus said to the woman, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people meet and worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship. God is spirit. And those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. And let us sing. Water, river, Spirit, grace, wash over me, wash over me, 
carve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. Water, river, spirit, grace, sweep over me, sweep over me. Recarve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me. In sculpting me. Just then, Jesus' disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman. But no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to meet him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete that one's work. Do you not say, four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages, and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here is the saying that holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that he truly is the Savior of the world. Let us sing. Water, river, spirit, grace, wash over me, wash over me. Recarve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. Water, river, spirit, grace, sweep over me. Sweep over me, recarve the depths your fingers traced in sculpting me, in sculpting me. And let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and light in our hearts the fire of your love, the words of my mouth, that the meditations of each of our hearts might be acceptable to you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, several days ago, the kids and I were at the park playing. They had run off to start off on the jungle gym and I had settled down on the bench, just taking out my phone and my ear pods to listen to my audiobook when a woman began to approach me and my heart sank. I was not afraid because she was a stranger, because I didn't know her. 
I was afraid because I was worried I was going to lose my time with my audiobook. But as she began to speak, she told me about how our children had been at the same daycare together, about the circumstances which she was going through in that moment, about her fear and her vulnerability, and she invited me to share those same fears and vulnerabilities with her. It was a moment I could have very easily missed if I had given in to that worry about missing my alone time, about missing my audiobook. It was a gift and a grace to be invited into that interaction. Today in our scripture reading, we hear a story of Jesus and a Samaritan woman meeting together at a well. They interact for a period of time sharing their vulnerabilities and sharing their concerns with one another. What I find fascinating about this story is that it would have been very easy for them to have given into fear. For they were divided by race and nationality, by sex and by gender. Those barriers could very much have kept them apart. And yet with appropriate boundaries put into place, they seek to come together, to share their deepest hearts with one another, to be known and to know one another. We are in a time when we very easily could allow fear to keep us separate, to set up barriers between us, barriers that would keep us from caring for one another. But with appropriate boundaries, respecting the necessity of space and social distancing, we can continue to interact, continue to share and care for one another using technology, notes, phone calls, expressions of love that cross distances. My prayer for us this week is that we might indeed know Jesus as the living water. The water that nurtures the seeds of community, of intimacy, of love, even across the barriers that are right now before us. That we will drink in that living water of community, of intimacy, and of love this day and in all the days ahead. Amen. Friends, let us join our hearts together as a people of prayer, praying in particular, again, for people with disabilities who may not know what is happening in the world right now. Give water to our thirsty people, O God. You remind us that the water we use now will have to be reused by our children and by our grandchildren. You remind us that while we get clean water from the tap, some in other parts of the world have to walk miles to a source of water and water there that may even be polluted. You remind us that television and print and digital media satisfy our thirst for knowledge, for information, for fresh opinions. You remind us that the world is thirsty, thirsty for justice, thirsty for peace, and thirsty for understanding. Living God, you satisfy thirst. Help us to be partners in providing living water. You slake the thirst of the suffering, O God. You stand beside those who call out for water but whose needs are denied. You sustain nurses and care staff who provide basic care in hospitals and for people in institutions. You comfort those whose thirst is for attention and friendship and recognition. You stand beside those whose loss of mental or physical facility has left them in a drought of friendship. Your strength to those whose loss of a loved one has left them parched for compassion, people we now call to mind in our hearts.
living God, you satisfy thirst. Help us to be partners in providing living water. You give living water to our church, O oh God. The water of baptism, where you embrace both children and adults into living community. The water, the juice, the tea, the coffee, the potluck meals that we share together as signs of welcome and fellowship and friendship. The mission projects that supply water pumps and irrigation and storage tanks are there as a reminder that our communities and our giving will never visit, will change people's lives forever. Living God, you satisfy thirst. Help us to be partners in providing living water. You give living water to each of us, O oh God. Our thirst for new life and direction is satisfied by your word found in scripture, in the lives of the saints, in the lives of those we come into community with. We drink at the well of good relationship and close friendship. We rejoice in the compassionate work that leaves us thirsting, but satisfied, for your love has been a part of it. And we thirst for true life in the spirit that leads us to new learning, to new venturing, to new risking. Living God, you satisfy thirst. Help us to be partners in providing living water. All this we ask in the name of the one who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we prepare to part, let us hear these words from poet and pastor and painter, Jan Richardson. If you stand at the edge of this blessing and call down into it, you will hear your words return to you. If you lean in and listen close, you will hear this blessing give the story of your life back to you. Quiet your voice. Quiet your judgment. Quiet the way you always tell your story to yourself. Quiet all these things, and you will hear the whole, whole of it and the hollows of it, the spaces in the telling, the gaps where you hesitate to go. Sit at the rim of this blessing. Press your ear to its lip, its sides, its curves that were carved out long ago by those whose thirst first drove them deep those who dug into the layers with only their hands and their hope. Rest yourself beside this blessing, and you will begin to hear the sound of water entering the gaps. Still yourself, and you will feel it rising up within you, filling every emptiness, springing forth anew. My friends, the peace of Christ is with us always. May we take that peace and share it to all we encounter. May peace be.